You're listening to Teach Me the Bible podcast, where we unpack the meaning of books, passages, and themes from Scripture. Join us each week as Dr. David Klingler walks us through God's Word and teaches the Bible. Each episode has a study guide available in the show notes. This is Teach Me the Bible podcast. Welcome back to another edition of Teach Me the Bible podcast. I have the honor of filling in today. My name is Jonathan Rosenauer, so I've been in before, but it's been a little bit. David, thanks for <laughs> gracing me again with this time and the knowledge. It's going to be a lot of fun. So I'd love to, before we get started, remind the listeners, the viewers of the resources that we have readily available mm-hmm. through the Teach Me the Bible app and the website. There's a study guide always there, and it just kind of helps follow along. And so there's extra questions, there's opportunities to dig in a little bit more. And so that's always there always available. And also every day outside of the day's episode are released. So new episodes come out on Monday, Tuesday through Friday. There's also a daily devotional email that can be sent out. So you can subscribe to that. Great resource, easy to follow real quick as well. I know in the days of convenience, that's big. So I get that is great. So I think people need to sign up for that and just really utilize those tools. So thank you guys for what you're doing. Thanks yeah. for this time. And we're in first Corinthians, just continuing on chapter 10 today chapter 10. So we're going to jump right in, jump into the story and see what kind of stuff we can unpack, what Paul is saying to them and what they were doing wrong. It seems like that's kind of a common thing, right? <laughs> Maybe that's why he had to write two books, two letters well, to them. Yeah. Well, yeah, the Corinthian church. I mean, look, we, um, so much of what's in the New Testament epistles, that, you know, the apostles address problems and, and uh, you know, you if there's nothing wrong, you don't get a letter from an apostle. So if a letter is coming from an <laughs> apostle, point. you're probably, you know, need to shape up or something's, <laughs> something's awry. And, and, uh, and Paul had spent quite a bit of time with the, with the Corinthians. And so he knew them. Um, and, uh, and so this is a church that's very dear to Paul and, and he's got to correct him and he corrects mm-hmm. him quite a bit. And, and, um, and so that's, yeah, that's where we are in this first Corinthians, uh, uh, letter. Uh, just by a quick way of review, um, there are divisions in the church, and um, and they're divided because some are following Paul and some are following Apollos, and and uh, and also there at the beginning some are following Cephas, um, um, which is Peter. Mm-hmm. But Paul's addressing this situation, and uh, and specifically, Paul is under examination. He's being judged, evaluated by these uh, these Corinthians, and. Uh, and they have some questions for him. He's, uh, this is back in chapter four. It's a very small thing for me to be examined by you or any, uh, any, uh, human court is, uh, is how they translate it uh, actually in chapter four, verse three, it's any human day, um, uh, which is really, a an interesting uh, translation, uh, how they get human court, mm-hmm. uh, what's going on there. Well, what he's saying is, uh, I'm going to be judged by the Lord on the day of the Lord, not by you on whatever day you pick. Absolutely. <laughs> but yeah. anyway, he's under sense. examination and and uh, and they've asked him a bunch of questions and so that's what he's been dealing with in chapters uh 7 and 8 and 9 and and now in chapter 10 he's kind of uh summing up his uh, his argument in chapter 10 and he's going to explain to them, he's going to introduce this concept to them that that the Lord judges. Uh, the Lord uh judges those who tear down the body. In fact, he has said this back in chapter 3. This, do, uh, do you not know that you are a temple of God and that the Spirit of God dwells in you? If any man destroys the temple of God, God will destroy him, for the temple of God is holy, and that's what you are. And so he, now he's going to move to examples of, you know, God did, just didn't get into the you know, judging, correcting, disciplining yeah. people business. He's been at this for a while, uh, in fact, Paul's going to say that these things were examples for us, that we would not, uh, uh, you know, crave evil things and that type of thing. Absolutely. And so we jump into the story and this head on. And, and so for me, and, and the version I have, the, the heading is warnings from Israel's past. And so like you said, God's already been at this. Yeah. And so Paul it, is just kind of, hey, don't forget. Yeah. Um, so here we are. God is not, uh, hasn't changed. Um, and, and one of the things that I think happens to us in the church is we, you know, we think that God is um, our our daddy. Uh, you know, he's kind of like a benevolent, nice, never um, angry 
grandfather who's just kind and gives presents to his grandchildren. <laughs> and you got to say it. Kind <laughs> but you of have to ask for it. Kind right? yeah. voice. Isn't that what right? prayer is for? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right. Uh, but Paul wants to make sure uh, that uh, they know that the church is a serious deal, that the body of Christ is serious, right? And and so uh, he begins in ten one. He says, "For I do not want you to be uninformed or unaware, brethren, that our fathers were all under the cloud, uh, and all passed through the sea, and were all baptized into Moses in the cloud and in the sea." You're going wait a second. And I don't remember that uh, anything about Israel being baptized. Uh, his point is that they went you know, through the cloud and through the sea, and they were following Moses. Now, here's the point that he's, that he's making. He's, he's been making this back in chapter 1 concerning this baptism. He's going to continue to make this point in this chapter, then in chapter 12, and again in chapter 15. Um, remember back in chapter 1, he says, I thank God that I didn't baptize any of you so that none of you could say you were baptized in my name. And, and um, you know, was Paul crucified for you? Were you baptized in the name of Paul? Uh, and so apparently what's going on is is they were baptized in the name of apostles. They were following apostles just as Moses. He says, look, he's going to make the point here in the next few verses. They may have been following Moses, sure enough, uh, but they were being fed by Christ. Here's, here's the point. Uh, they all ate the same spiritual food. They all drank the same spiritual drink. This is in chapter 10, verse 4. For they were drinking from a spiritual rock which was following them. And the rock was Christ. And some people say, no, wait a second. Paul's getting very uh, creative, allegorical here. No. Uh, actually, if you track the story in the Old Testament, if you, if you go back to Genesis, and uh, by the end of, uh, of the book of Genesis, chapter 49, verse 22 through 24, uh, they're looking, Israel is looking for the stone, the rock of Israel. And, and this rock is going to show up in the imagery throughout the Exodus. And, and uh, Moses is going to refer to uh, the Lord and the rock of his salvation. Of course, the the, the identity of the, the one who saves that comes from the Lord is the Christ. And so so Paul's not using any new imagery. He's not making anything up. This is just the imagery that's come through the, uh, the whole Old Testament. Verse 5, Nevertheless, with most of them, God was not well pleased, for they were laid low in the wilderness. Now, what does laid low mean? Well, they, they were killed. <laughs> You know, they, uh, in, in, in chapter, seven, uh, chapter 11, the next chapter, he's going to say, this is why some of you uh, are sick and some of you sleep, well, laid low. You, you know, <laughs> sleep the Lord forever. is still yeah. disciplined because those who tear down the temple, God will tear down them. Uh, in chapter 5, I've turned this one over to Satan for the destruction of his flesh so that his soul may be saved. Uh, God is still in the, in the, the disciplining business, right? Uh, and that's the point. That Paul is uh, is uh, trying to make here is making here. Um, now these things happened as examples for us that we should not crave evil things as they also craved, and do not be idolaters as some of them were. And the people sat down to eat and drink and stood up to play. This comes from Exodus chapter thirty-two. This is uh, the story of uh, Moses being up on the mountain. Aaron goes and. And um, I, I like how that story presents it. He, uh, you know, they're crying out to him. We don't know what's happened to this person, Moses. And he collects all the gold and he he puts it into the fire, and poof, out comes a golden calf. A molten, you know, it just, just <laughs> kind of appeared. Yeah, yeah, there it is. It just appeared. You know, you know, Moses wasn't supposed to do it. Just it just popped out, and you know, what what could we have done? You know, so, oops, <laughs> sorry, Aaron's, Aaron's uh, kind of half-hearted explanation. Uh, but, uh, you know, and uh, this is back in Exodus chapter 32. Uh, we were talking about this earlier, you know, this this flipping of pages. Um, you know, this is proof of of the old school nature of... Uh, yeah, what is that thing uh, you're holding uh, yeah. there? That's a book. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The, is it not on our if, phones? Yeah, that's right. right. Uh, if, you're, if you're watching this, this makes sense what we're talking about. If you're not, Jonathan's sitting here with his with his iPhone, and I've got... Uh, I'm kind of stranded in the middle. I've got a computer on the left. Uh, and I've got my uh, paper copy here. That happy medium uh, on the yeah. right. Yeah, and I and I I still like to uh, you know to to touch it and feel. Anyway, this Absolutely. is in Exodus chapter thirty-two, verse four. Uh, he he um, uh, all the people tore off their gold rings thirty-two three, and uh, which were in their ears, and brought them to Aaron. And Aaron took them from their hand and fashioned it into a graving a graving tool and made it into a golden calf. And they said, "This is uh, your God." O Israel, who brought you out of the land of Egypt. Now, when Aaron saw this, he built an altar before it, and Aaron made a proclamation and said, Tomorrow 
shall be a feast to the Lord. So the next day they rose early, offering burnt offerings and brought peace offerings, and the people sat down to eat and to drink, and they rose up to play. And the Lord spoke to Moses and said, Go down at once uh, for your people. I, I, did you catch that? For your people. Go, Moses, you go down at once for yeah. your, not my people, <laughs> your people, yeah. <laughs> your people whom you brought out of the land of Egypt. That's good. Have corrupted themselves. You better get down there because I'm about to kill them all. That's like a parenting. No, that's your son. That's not my son. <laughs> that's that's right. what's happening. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You'll see this uh, this interesting change in the in the pronouns all through this. Yep. The, the, Moses, these are your people. You better go down there because I'm about to wipe them off the map. And, of course, Moses jumps in yeah. front of the Lord and says, don't, you know, don't, you, do this. Don't, don't do this. Don't do this, right? Um, uh, but the point that, that Paul is in the middle of making is the Lord judges, disciplines, uh, his people, those he loves. And uh, so back in uh, chapter 10, verse 8, nor let uh, us act immorally as some of them did, uh, did and 23,000 fell in one day. Nor let us try the Lord as some of them did and were destroyed by serpents. This is back in the Numbers chapter uh, 25 and then chapter 21. Nor grumble as some of them did and were destroyed by the store. Uh, now these things happened to them as an example. And they were written for our instruction upon whom the ends of the earth have come. Therefore, let him who thinks he stands take heed lest he fall. Now, let's, um, this is interesting language here and um, a, a little bit difficult to, uh, to catch in the English for sure. Therefore, let him who thinks he stands take heed lest he fall. What is the fall? Well, the fall means die, stand. Uh, the interesting interesting thing here is the word here for stand is also going to be uh, the the word uh, that is used um, um, uh, for uh, it's the root word that's used for resurrection stand mm. again right um, I make known to you brethren the gospel which I preached to you this is fifteen one which you have received in which you now stand. Uh, by which you are saved if you hold fast to the word which I preached to you unless you believe to no purpose. They translate it, believed in vain. We'll get to this when we get to chapter 15. We want to bring it up here. Uh, they're standing. Um, they're going to fall, right? In other words, they're standing. They're, they're, everyone's going to the grave. Um, the question is, why did you believe the gospel? Well, to stand again, you know, resurrection, yeah, resurrection right? And yeah. so so the the point is a future hope. It's a, it's a you know, but you don't want to be judged by the Lord and be caused to, to fall. Uh, that doesn't mean that you won't be right. In fact, the Lord disciplines you so that you will um, um, stand again. Okay. Um, does, this, does that make sense? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. And my version says, so whoever thinks he stands must be careful not to fall. Uh, A little different play on words. Well, uh, yeah, it's not be Take careful heed, yeah. to fall. You know, they're, they're taking it as falling from, you know, whatever, you know, no, no, no. Uh, the falling there isn't something you're doing. It's something that's being done to you. Absolutely. Right? The Lord is ju- the Lord is judging the twenty three thousand who fell in one day. Right. <laughs> yeah. They rebelled against the Lord, uh, and so He killed them dead. Yeah, and right? that fall. That's the comparison. that's the fall. Yeah. So standing means being alive. Falling means being dead. dead. Uh, and standing again, resurrection means standing again. And, yeah, and of course, our hope is to stand again. Uh, but if you need to be careful how you stand, um, lest the Lord cause you to fall, die. <laughs> you know, die. This yeah. is why some of you are sick and some of you sleep. See, it fits right into Paul's argument. This is going to go right into chapter uh, uh, chapter 11. Um, uh, and then he's going to make this point. No temptation has o- overtaken you, but that which is common to men. In other words, you're not dealing with anything that Old Testament Israel didn't deal with. And what? Look back at what happened to them. Uh, they were judged. They were laid low. They they were caused to to fall. Uh, do you think that God has changed? Do you think His character has changed? Do you, uh, look, you're not going through anything new. And if you're doing the same thing they did, don't be shocked if God responds in the same way He always has. Right? Um, we were. Um, uh, in church this last Sunday, God disciplines those he loves. Uh, if you show me someone without discipline, I'll show you someone that's unloved. Uh, the God, God certainly loves us, and so he disciplines us. And that's 
Uh, that's the point. Yeah, um, it's not a participation. Yeah, trophy. God is yeah. faithful. That's that's the point. No temptation has undertaken you, which is common, and God is faithful. Uh, he will not allow you to be tested beyond what you are able, but with the te- with the test, he will provide you a way of escape uh, that you may be able to endure it. He will cause you to stand again, um, but he may discipline you along the way, and if you continue down the trail then he may discipline you to the point of death. This is what Paul is talking about in, in back in chapter 5. So all of these mm-hmm. chapters and all this discussion relates. Now, uh, this kind of bumps up against our, you know, you know, God loves me and has a wonderful plan for my life, and he only wants what's best <laughs> for feels me good. Yeah. as I define it. You know? Yeah, <laughs> well, my God does yeah, it this My way. God yeah. only wants what's best for me. Um, well, no, the Lord God wants what's best for the body of Christ. And if you are tearing down the body of Christ, if you're not, uh, then uh, buckle up. Discipline's yeah. coming. When reading this verse, it, it makes that, that saying come up, God's not going to give you more than you can handle. We like to hold on to that, right? Because that feels oh. good. Oh, yeah. It's like, there's yeah. no way God's going to test me, challenge me. It's like, what well, it says it right there? Yeah, and I can't <laughs> yeah. handle much. So, you know, yeah. I'm, a, I'm a delicate <laughs> Life flower. Life will be easy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, no, delicate no. flower, yeah. Yeah, no, no test is overtaking you, that which is common to man, right? Uh, and so um, this, this has been going on. No, no test, no temptation, it's the same word, has overtaken you, which hasn't happened before. And so, you know, this isn't anything new. And they responded this way, and so God responded that way. And he's faithful. He will respond in the same way because he disciplines those he loves. Therefore, right, so if, if, if your interpretation of chapter uh, 10, verse 13 doesn't lead you to the therefore in the next verse, therefore, my beloved, flee from idolatry. Why? Because God is faithful, because God has not changed, because these things were given as examples for us, right? Yeah, what was just said. Yeah, and so, in. so you know, idolatry, um, you know, craving evil, all this stuff, you need to flee that um, because um, they, you know, the people sat, sat down and, uh, and to eat and drink and, and acted immorally and put uh, the Lord, try, let us, uh, you, know, you know, to try the Lord. They said, don't do that. Uh, they began to grumble. Uh, all of these things were examples. This is not uncommon. Uh, this stuff has happened in the Old Testament. It's in, you're going through the same thing. Uh, and so this is common to man. Can you overcome it? Yeah. How do you, how do you overcome it? How do you, uh, has the Lord provided a way of escape? Yeah, it's called flee. <laughs> you get you, away. Yeah, you flee. Yeah. It, right. <laughs> this is not uh, fight or flight. No, yeah. This, yeah. No, run, right? f- fly. So yeah. I speak to you as a wise man. Judge what I say. This makes perfect sense. Is not the cup of blessing which we share a blessing in the blood of Christ? Is not the bread which we break a sharing in the body of Christ? Why is he going to the blood of Christ and the body of Christ? Because just as Moses, just as they were baptized in Moses and they were following Moses, they ate the same spiritual fruit and drank the same spiritual drink, so also you do as well, right? Uh, The cup of blessing, uh, the bread of Christ, the blood of Christ, you know, the uh, the Lord's Supper. Uh, since there is one bread, uh, we who are many are one body. We all partake of the same bread. He's, he's making the point. We are in the body of Christ. We're eating the same spiritual food, drinking just as they were, yeah, we're together. as well. Yeah. Right? Uh, look at the nation of Israel. Are not those who eat the sacrifices share in the altar? What do I mean then? That the thing sacrificed to idols is anything or that the idol is anything? No, but I say that the things which uh, the Gentiles sacrifice, they sacrifice to demons they're not, uh, and are not God. I do not want you to become sharers and demons. You cannot partake of the cup of the Lord and the cup of demons. You cannot partake of the table of the Lord and the table of demons. Or do we provoke the Lord to jealousy? Um, now, that's a loaded phrase in the Old Testament to, uh, the Lord is a jealous God, right? He's going to wipe you off the map. This comes from Deuteronomy chapter 28. If you go and follow other gods, guess what? The Lord's a jealous God. Just as he joyed his heart to multiply you, Israel, and cause you to be blessed in the land, so he will uh, bless his uh, bless His little soul. You know, little soul, I shouldn't say it that way. The, the Lord would be blessed to wipe you off the map, right? Fall. Yeah, if fall. If you stand with someone That's else, exactly you will right. fall with That's right. Else. You know, and so it's... Uh, 
Uh, you know, so it's not some figurative language. It's literally fall dead, right? <laughs> you know? yeah, pretty easy to understand there. Yeah. Or do we provoke the Lord to jealousy? We are not stronger than he, are we? Now, remember how Paul began this argument. Uh, he, he, he's explaining to them uh, that, um, uh, that they think that they are they're strong, that they are wise. Um, for consider your calling, brethren. Not many of you are wise, uh, not many of you uh, according to the flesh, but God has chosen the foolish things to shame the wise. He has chosen the weak things to shame the things which are strong, right? Uh, that no one should boast before God. And so he's going to make uh, this point uh, in chapter 1 that the weakness of God is stronger than men. And, and what verse was that for this people to chapter, reckon reference? Chapter 1, verse 25. To make that connection. Uh, but the foolishness yeah. of God is wiser than men, and the weakness of God is stronger than men. You're not stronger than God, Right. Uh, and so what are you doing? Uh, we are not stronger than he, are we? All things are lawful, but not all things are profitable. Now, all things are lawful, but not all things <clears throat> build up or edify. Now, this is uh, the same exact uh, language, same wording that he's used back in chapter 6, verse 12. All things are lawful for me, but not all things are profitable. He just He's already said it. All things are lawful but I will not be mastered by any. And so Paul's point from chapter 6 all the way through this point in chapter 10 is the same principle at work here. Everything that he does, uh, while it may be allowed, right? Uh, is Paul allowed to get married? Of course. Um, is that the thing that most edifies the body? No. Um, now, if... If you can't control, you know, your your yourself, your lust, your desires, uh, then you need to be married. And he says right? that elsewhere. Yeah, yeah. Th that's in chapter seven. Yeah. Um, uh, what about eating and uh, uh, drinking? You know, it, can he eat? What? Yeah, sure. Uh, but what motivates him? If if eating meat causes my brother to stumble, I'll never eat meat again. Uh, why? Because he wants to build up the brother, build up, build up the weaker brother, build up the body, right? And so uh, everything that he's doing, whether he's getting married, he's eating and drinking, he's getting paid or not getting paid, chapter 6, you know, 7, 8, 9, um, everything that he's doing is for the building up of the body. And so that all things are lawful, but not all things edify, not all things build up. Uh, build up the building, the body, the temple. That's back in, yeah. uh, in chapter three. And I'm I'm listening. Okay, well, marriage is. We're not saying marriage is bad. Meat is bad. But for those that are married, you know there are things you don't get to do because you're married. Sure. You know if you're eating meat, you know the cost of that. Whether whatever you want to say to your body or the cost, literally financially sure. or sure. so. Uh, Paul would. That's uh, an easy way to think. Yeah, about. Paul yeah. can go on mission trips. He can go everywhere and get beaten and, you know, all of it, right? Um, up mo uh, in the morning, he didn't have a wife. Um, but when you have a wife and a family, now uh, your your loyalties, uh, there are responsibilities that are there to your wife, uh, to your husband, to your your children. And these are required to represent the character of God, the love of God to them. If you're free of those things, that's the language that Paul uses, uh, free from a wife, if you're free from a master, then you are free to serve the Lord holy. If uh, holy, not H-O-L-Y, but W-H-O-L-Y. Yeah, yeah. uh, uh, but but if, if you have a, a wife, there's responsibility there. Uh, if you have a family, there's responsibility there. Uh, and so... Uh, and so this is uh, this is Paul's point. He 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 wants to be free from all, so that he can serve the Lord fully, wholly, without any distractions. Right. Uh, but if you're married, you have responsibilities. Right? Yeah, simple things. I was talking yeah. to a friend recently. Went to his house, and his hot water was on when I went to wash my hands and you know burn my hands, so to speak. I'm like man, I, I was like, oh wait. I have a wife that I don't want to burn her hands, so I turn it to cold when I'm done washing my hands. <laughs> right. And he's like, what do you mean? I'm like, well, you're not married. <laughs> you don't have to worry about that. Yeah. So it could be even the basic thing. Yeah, real real simple basic stuff, Yeah, right? so the same thing for Paul. He's yeah. got more that he can do now. Yeah, and so um, so the, the, the principle is really simple, and he's going to get to it in chapter 10, verse 24. 
let no one seek his own but that of his neighbor. Don't, don't seek your own good. Don't, don't, um, and Paul says this all the time. Why does he keep saying this all the time in every letter to all these different people? Because um, we are members of the body of Christ, and our desire is to build up the body of Christ. Therefore, um, you know, the, the member of the body, you know, the eyeball can't be just looking out for the eyeball, right? Yeah. You know, here comes a, uh, I don't know, here comes a rock at, at, at oh, it's not going to hit me, the eye, so I don't care. <laughs> I'm not going to send this signal to the brain to look out That's because it's going to hit you in the chest. Yeah, you know? yeah. <laughs> it's, it's really it's, a, it's still going to hurt. Yeah, yeah. it's really a great <laughs> an, a, analogy because that what hurts part of the body hurts the whole body. So uh, don't uh, uh, seek your own good, but the good of his neighbor as well. Eat anything that's sold in the meat and the, <clears throat> in the market without asking a question. For the Lord is, uh, the earth is the Lord's and all that's in it. Uh, if uh, one of the unbelievers invites you and you wish to go eat, eat anything set before you without asking any questions for conscience sake. Why is that? Because who's who are you trying to win over here following Paul's example? And Paul's going to actually say this in 11.1, 1, be imitators of me as a... His desire is to win over this one that has invited him in, an unbeliever yeah. who's invited him in, right? Yeah, so he's goal? not going to make this a, a, a big issue. Um. Uh, I mean, not your own conscience, but the, the other man's. Uh, why is my freedom judged by another's conscience? If I partake with thankfulness, why am I slandered concerning that for which I give thanks? Notice uh, the I, I mean uh, not your conscience, but your own. If I partake with thankfulness, That's verse 30, why am yeah. I slandered concerning that which I give thanks for? You know, so in other words, there's something that's happening to him. In other words, he's he's going in and eating with unbelievers, and he's not asking any questions because his desire is to win them over to Christ. I've become all things to all people. All means I may win a few. And they're going, why are you doing that, Paul? Um, because I'm trying to win people to Christ, to the body of Christ. Um, and so this is what's driving Paul always. For if I partake with thankfulness, why am I slandered concerning that which I give thanks? Verse 31, uh, whether then... Uh, you eat or drink or whatever you you do, do all for the glory of God. Give no offense either to the Jew or to the Greek or to the church of God, just as I also please all men in all things, not seeking my own, my own profit, my own good. That goes back to chapter uh, 10, verse 24. Uh, let no one seek his own, but that of his neighbor. He's ex giving some concrete examples, right? Not seeking his own uh, but of the many that they may be saved. Be imitators of me as I also am of Christ. Um, don't let that chapter 11 break stop you from reading because it's just going to continue. So how do we imitate Paul? Well, there's a whole bunch of examples. Uh, but the principle is simple. Everything that he does is for the building up of the, of the body of Christ. And so that's not a complicated uh, concept. And it's not one that I think that uh, that we can't do, right? But we've got to focus on it. We got to see it. That's the, that's our goal. Yeah, and I'm I'm walking through this with you, listening and thinking through things I've been told, things I've even thought, and reading it. And like you just mentioned, don't stop as we continue into eleven with the next episode. Yep. But with this thought of all things to all people and walking with them, and for the sake of the unbeliever, that doesn't mean like you know, you go to the bar and you're allowed to be an alcoholic because you're trying to save people. You know, right. you go to a, a club or something because you're trying to know it. Because then if you keep going, well, what does he say in 31 for the glory of God? Well, I don't think becoming alcoholic is something like that. Sure. So it doesn't mean it's just Absolutely. fair game. And go back yeah. to like we talked about lawful, permissible. Okay. No, right. all of this works together. Yeah. yeah. The desire is to win over the other. And so let's say that a someone who's a, you know, recovering alcoholic invites you, you know, well, the last thing you want to do is cause them. You're always looking out for the other, the well-being of the other, the the faith of the other, That's the building great. up of the it's other. the body. Always, because yeah. it's the body, yeah. And so it is at your expense for their benefit. And, and you know, has this cost Paul? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Uh, and so actually, uh, while we're going to uh, stop here, we'll pick it up next time, but, but I, I don't want you to to stop thinking through this uh, as a section. So as you're going, continue to read down through chapter 11 because uh, he's going to say, now I praise you because you remember me in everything and hold 
firmly to the traditions. These are the tradi- And so he's going to uh, say, hey, keep doing what I've taught you to do and uh, c- keep continuing these things. So, so chapter 11 just uh, flows right out of chapter 10. And, and in fact, uh, just remember that we're, we're stopping in the chapter breaks, which maybe we shouldn't do um, because it only reaffirms. I'm, I'm telling you, read through the chapter breaks, disregard the chapter breaks, then we stop yeah, at the chapter yeah. breaks. So <laughs> maybe, we maybe we should rethink that. But, yeah, uh, uh, but nonetheless, even though we're going to stop here at the end of the chapter, uh, Paul doesn't stop at the end of the chapter, so keep reading that as you continue through. Yeah, absolutely. It's a great um, idea, method, whatever practice, whatever you want to say, to sit and read through. I, I don't know how many people have done that, read through an entire, as we say, book, letter right. at once. And, and so with that, with those kind of uh, final thoughts, uh, applications, some of the things we walked through, do you have anything, just closing thoughts, final thoughts for viewers, for listeners, just to walk away with? Every chapter in this letter. Paul is addressing divisions in the church, in the body of Christ. And his solution in every chapter is for them to recognize they are members of one body. So that in everything you do, you are members of the body of Christ. And everything you should do then should be for the building up of the body of Christ. And it it should sound like uh, we're saying the same thing over and over. Well, the reason why it sounds like we're saying the same thing over and over is because Paul's saying the same thing over and over. Do you, right. do you guys get it yet, right? Yeah, <laughs> We're going to keep saying it until we get it. Paul says, I'm going to keep explaining this in all of the different ways possible. I'm going to build this argument. It's, a, it's like a he's, a he's a lawyer, he's a Pharisee, he's a lawyer, and he is presenting a, 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 an ironclad, airtight case that these Corinthians can't get out of. You are in the body of Christ, and it's true for them, and it's true for us. Yeah, absolutely. And, and thinking through this, of course, we can just say it's for the good of the body, but we got to go backwards a little bit more, which, you know, we love connecting these dots. And so to be a part of the body, to build up the body, you first got to be a part of a body. So for anybody listening or watching and yes. doubts or questions or skeptics, whatever, well, yes, no, nobody's body is perfect. Even the most lean cut physical people in the world, they still have some percentage of body fat. Yep. So there's no perfection and that's yep. good. So if you're thinking like, I don't want to be a part of a body because of this, that, or the other, well, to this point, be a part of building up the body. Absolutely. Don't be a part of the issue that's breaking it down. Absolutely. So we'll keep coming back to that. I love that that thought and just reminding us that, hey, this is Paul's point. It's a great point for us today, and it does matter, and it will always matter. Mm-hmm. So we're going to pick up next week with Chapter 11. We are taking the break, but I encourage anybody listening or watching just to go ahead and maybe dedicate some time just to read this through, to follow that train of thought and what Paul is saying and as it was originally written. So we're going to break for now, but encourage you, keep reading through, see what Paul is saying. So David, thanks for your time. Remind everybody of the study guides, the daily devotionals, check those out. Great resources. So David, appreciate it. See you next time. See you next time. Thanks for listening to Teach Me the Bible podcast. Our desire is to use the power of God's word to change lives. For more information, download our app. Join us next week for another episode of Teach Me the Bible.